Looks like Goketsu and Bakuzan got cut short. Get it? Cut the fire! Oh, forget it. It's not worth your time. What Punch Man? Season 2, Episode 9. Um, words. What was this episode called? <laughs> wow, you're late and you can't remember the title. What a star. What Punch Man? Season 2, Episode 9, The Ultimate Dilemma was... Uh, I don't know what the popular consensus is, but I enjoyed it. Um, I liked the stuff they did. Um, because, like, despite, and like, it, <laughs> maybe hasn't, season two hasn't just shown it the best, but, you know, this episode is not about fighting, which is why I say, because season two hasn't maybe necessarily been all about fighting too, but this is not about fights, this episode, this is about, like, you know, redemptions and character growth and things like that, and, like, this is, like, you know, closing, like, Swiryu's character arc, and then, like, well, not, like, fully closing it, but, like, you know, closing it to a satisfactory degree so we don't have to see him for a bit, and then we go into the Saitama stuff as well, and, like, a new opening for that, and then we do get, like, and hints towards the future. It's like an ending, it's the ending of the Super Fight arc and the opening of the Monster Association arc. Um... And in any case, one thing I really like about this episode is the sound. I try and talk about sound as much as I can because it's the main kind of um, thing that's going to boost. It's like it's going to give the difference to the manga. Um, and we finally get to hear like the real bits of Sega no Shiko, which is um, uh, like the like Saitama's theme song. Uh, the, and because there's a remake, like it's a redone version, like a few of the bits of the soundtrack, we haven't really had a good chance to hear it. So we get to hear quite a bit this episode, and I really like it. I was listening to it just as like these scenes I really liked were happening, and I was like. Yeah, good work. I, I enjoyed that kind of stuff. Um, like, especially, so obviously you got like, uh, the two, you got multiple different versions of it. You got the Bakuzan bit where obviously it's like the sound like, -da 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 -da, and then you guys talk with um, Squirrel where it's like the piano, like, do -do 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 -do, and like, it, it all sounds really good. I, I really do like this. Um, so, as as this goes on, of course, he easily uh, demolishes Bakuzan, who was tormenting Swiryu, so that's very satisfying to see. Um, it's like, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. I say it every time. But the one thing I will say is, I've read the manga. I won't spoil it. Uh, but, you know, if you want to watch it, that's fine. I also understand I'm incredibly late, so none of this is going to get watched. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, so, some things that I think this episode does well... Uh, like, I think do, that is done well in the story, I feel like are kind of not done as well because of, like, the pacing of the episode. So, like, I'm, I'm trying to remember, does it even happen in the same chapter? Because, like, when... So, like, Genos is... I, I should probably get chronological with this. Okay, so, beats him, bam, Swiryu is, like, in awe of this amazing person he just met, and, like, you know, he wants to know more about heroes and everything like that. Um, and, I, like I said, I think that's done really well. I think the music does really help sell that scene, because Swiryu is kind of, like, having to turn a new opinion on heroes because of this guy, and then, of course, we get the scene with Goketsu, where he's like, oh... Um, watch out, don't go over there, because it's a really powerful monster. And Saitama's like, be right back. I love that bit. Uh, I love that, because it's just such a Saitama thing, because, like, why wouldn't Saitama go after this really powerful monster? Because he's going to go cause extra trouble, and it could be his challenge. Why would he not, by any reason, go after this? Um, and, like, I like I said, I think people weren't... I don't know what general consensus is, but I understand if people weren't too happy about fights. But, to argue against it, the series is called One Punch Man. And, of course, like... Goketsu is one of my favourite monsters, genuinely, because of, like, and, like, just from, like, you guys saw him over a couple of episodes, he was only there for a few chapters, but I think he was just done so well with everything about him, uh, I just really enjoyed, like, watching him do his thing, uh, so for him to get off-screened as well, like, he, you'd probably think I wouldn't enjoy that, but I did, because, once again, it's one punch man, why would he not lose to, Sa why would Saitama not be able to beat him, and of course, like, the way they built it up, though, for that, like, that betrayal of expectations is done really well, because Genos is the one who says, like, you know, oh, um, you gotta watch out for this guy, like, he, like, Genos in the world of One Punch Man is the guy who knows mostly, like, who could really recognise Saitama's strength, right? So it speaks a lot for Goketsu, where Genos is saying, the only way we're gonna beat this guy is if Saitama and the other S-Class heroes all team up, and that's the only way. And obviously, like, you can say that's two things, so, like, it's a great way to build up Goketsu as a, as a powerhouse, going, like, oh my god, whoa. So that, when that punch is, like, Oh, what? But it could also mean, kind of just say about a bit about Genos too, like, he doesn't, even he doesn't really, he's the closest to Saitama, he really doesn't, like, even he doesn't understand uh, the depths of Saitama's strength. Um, and so obviously Saitama goes off and Suryu's really upset, he has that really weird face at one point as well, it looks like Saitama's simple face, and I don't remember that in the manga, uh, maybe he does pull that, but like, I was like, okay, I guess. Um, but, obviously, you know, you hear you hear the clash, and this is another strength of sound, because when we read this in the manga, obviously you just see it, you just see the sound effects in Suru's commentary, and you don't really know what's going on. And from the, you obviously get the visual of the clouds, like, splitting, right? We get that. Um, but, and it, but the sound really helps, because you hear these punches like this, boom, boom, 
boop, all these heavy punches, and like you hear this extra bassy death, like this deep bassy punch, like, boop, and you know that's Saitama's punch. And obviously, like from the clouds, but like it's it's just such a clear difference in the power, just from sounds alone. I love it. I think that's a great little bit of detail. Um, Obviously, the the head lens next to uh, Suryu, which is so good, like what, like because it is such a what moment. And I feel, and like I said, I think people might have been annoyed with that, but I I personally love that it happened. I I because I because it's one thing I love about Punch Man. Didn't expect that to happen, and it's great. Um, so obviously Suryu is like taken away, and he's got like he's he's got a new person to idolize now, and like you know to follow his life afterwards. And you get that great line of like obviously everything goes on. And, like I think delivery kind of helps with this. Obviously the sound goes do 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 do, and then obviously it goes to um Suryu going on about how like oh, one day can I be your disciple? Just cuts away. Absolutely not. Just ends there and cuts away, and I love it. Um, forgot about Puri. I really forgot about Puri. Not the fight against Free Hugger, but it threw me off when I saw the phone ring. I <sighs> just wear some jeans, even just jean shorts. Just wear. You can wear something skimpy if you want. You can do that. Just wear something to keep. It. Wear a backpack. If you want to be naked, do it. Just wear something that's not safe and hygienic. You'll probably get cancer or something. Um, so Saitama's was walking home, and he's once again he's at a low because you know he went to experience martial arts and thought he could fight some powerful fighters, and even got his hopes up a bit with a powerful monster, and then they all got let down because of the one punch. And then King shows up, and they have their discussion. And I forgot how good this discussion is because the whole thing with King here is like King, I suppose, in some ways, is the only one who can kind of get where Saitama's coming from, because like, Saitama, like, he knows how strong Saitama is, but he also, like, as the man with the with the mantle of the strongest hero, he kind of gets an idea what heroism should be, despite, obviously, his constant betrayals of it, but at the same time, like, like, in the anime, this works, I think, really well with the thing he says, because Saitama's obviously saying a lot of stuff, he's like, you know, he gets, he gets his mind off, like, you know, like, I, I keep getting let down, and, you know, I'm such a, I'm a great hero, but, like, it's not really living up to what I thought it would be. And then, obviously, King starts suggesting stuff to him, and this is really good, he's like, well, there's a, there's a dance class down by the station, why don't you give that a go? And he's like, wait, what? And then, obviously, he goes into this whole thing, like, maybe you won't find satisfaction in being a hero, maybe this isn't it, but, like, go broaden your horizons. If you're not getting satisfied from this one thing, try some new things, you might find enjoyment that make new friends, get some, get a hobby, that kind of stuff like that, and like, sometimes it's a bit like, oh, whatever, but like, also, King has this speech to him of, um, like, you know, saying, you know, you're, it's pretty arrogant to say you're the truly greatest hero, um, when there's more to being a hero than just defeating enemies in one punch, and while that is incredibly true, in the anime, I think this rings really well, and obviously it has the, it has the great sting at the end of just King going, I read that from a manga, though, um, and it's, and it's done really well, um, but, in the manga, this is, it's not, I suppose if you want to read the manga, it's not really a spoiler, it's just stuff that happens. Uh, but it doesn't affect the story at all. Uh, I kind of, I, well, I didn't fully agree with this, because they, in the manga there's a lot of side chapters, uh, which don't affect this main story, but they're basically about Saitama. It's a great, and basically the point of them is go like, here's some world building, and this is how Saitama's a true hero kind of thing. And it really does ring well. I like, Jerry, the, the amount of time Saitama you read it, you're like, this is what a true hero is, kind of thing. Like, the things he does in those side chapters, it's not about beating the monsters in one punch, it's about being, like, being a real hero kind of work. And that's that's what I love about him. Not all of them are about him, but there's quite a few of them out there that show him to be just a great person, not just a great hit, not just a strong, not just a strong person uh, in power, a strong person in character as well. Um, so, like, that's kind of where my disagreement is. But in the anime, it does, it's done really well. Meanwhile, Garo shows up, and... This scene was uh, so good. Like, this is what I'm saying about the use of sound. Just, and like, the kick was so good. Obviously, he goes rushing, he's like, it's king. And, like, it's, it's, it's the, they're definite opposites. They're setting them up as barrier opposition because Saitama keeps getting in fights where he wins and he's not losing and he's, and he's not enjoying himself. Meanwhile, Goro's the actual opposite where he's fighting these really strong opponents, he keeps losing, and he's really loving it because he's getting challenged and he's excited to grow stronger. He's where Saitama was a few years ago when he was training, right? So, obviously, he sees King, goes after him and completely knows Saitama. The kick was beautiful. It was just this, like, boom. And, like, just seeing it move, like, it was great when it happened originally. This was great as well. And then just gets planted into the wall. Next thing they talk about is just... <laughs> it's just... Oh wow, I was looking for this hero hunter. He might even be stronger than me. And King's like, well, I hope you find him someday, Saitama. Meanwhile, he's unconscious in a wall. Um, let's see, was there anything else from this episode? Yes, Sonic and uh, the ninjas. We cut to Sonic. Uh, we meet the two ninjas, and they're more upset with the Association. These powerhouses who very clearly are outclassing 
uh, Sonic, and it says, and it builds up their strength as well, because they go on to, like, you know, intimidate Sonic, and Sonic's like, but I don't feel like I can beat Saitama, I don't feel like I can beat these guys, so then we, he gets introduced to the idea of the monster cell, and then he's like, it's it's quite sad to know this, and I remember covering it when I first talked about it, but like, Sonic I, I thought like would have some form of redemption in the future, because he does fight against the heroes, of course, but he's an anti-hero, so like, obviously when he fought against Deep Sea King, um, like, he's not against fighting against monsters too, to prove who he's the, to prove his best. Same with the ninjas this time too, he wasn't like, oh, you're, you're villains, then I'll leave you be, because you're on my side. He's like, no, I'm just going to prove I'm the best. So I thought there might be some form of redemption, because of his skills and like in a different way to beat Saitama might join the Hero Association in the future. So it makes me quite sad to know that he was ready to sink to these levels to, to grow stronger this way. Like and I get it, like he was ready to basically give up his humanity to have a chance of beating Saitama. And that made me sad because that if he did that then he would have then I think that would have kind of sealed Sonic's fate and Sonic's good character. But they handled it really well, so instead of just eating it, he like he thinks he's like, oh I can't eat this raw, I'll cook it up, and then he just has diarrhea. And and then he's gone. So basically we're not gonna see him for a while. Uh, but it's, it's like I said, it's a good way to, it's like, it makes me, it made me sad, but it's also the comedy one punch, man. The comedy lands this time, you know, it's good stuff. Apart from that, I don't think there's too much I've got to say. Um, obviously, we get the appearance of Zombie Man, an S-Class hero who was uh, stalking Marshall Gorilla, who he was going to go after to try and find more information out on. And then it turns out, like, uh, Marshall Gorilla's been beaten by another gorilla, because Armor Gorilla from the first season, from the House of Evolution, uh, shows up and, like, just wrecks him by accident, like, because uh, cause he's just really strong. And then Zombie Man's me like, right, I've got to follow him for some more clues. So, could be some interesting stuff there. And, let's see... Uh, you get the ending, of course, too, where, uh, yeah, it's like a great way, it's a good cliffhanger at the same time because they're trying to sort out what's going on from here and the Monster Association, uh, I suppose it's a good way to build up, like, you get that little conversation between Bang Bomb, uh, talking about, um, Garo and saying, like, you know, they can't rest because he wouldn't rest because that's how he trained him, so, kind of, I would love to know more about their relationship, definitely, Bang and Garo, like, I'd love a flashback at some point, um, I like it might happen, it might not. I don't know, but if I if if I could get like a, even just like a side chapter or an OVA or something about their history, that would be lovely. I would love that so much. And then the Hero Association are having to deal with the threat of the Monster Association. The message comes in, and it's because a uh, monster's actually broken into there. So it's a good like, oh, what's going to happen next kind of thing. Uh, the animation was all right. I, I, there wasn't like there wasn't anything that made me go like, whoa. But it's not because like, but it's fine because this episode was not really about combat. It was more about like characters, so the animation doesn't need to be stellar, like, we don't need, like, stellar movement when King's talking to Saitama, or Oswiri is kind of opening up to Saitama about what he wants to do now. Uh, we don't need those kind of moments. Uh, but, like, it, not to say, but some of it was alright. I mean, like, I liked the bits of the Sonic, uh, um, Hellfire and, uh, Galewind fight, you know, like, there were some real bits I was like, ooh, that's nice. Um, but yeah, I, I guess that's my opinion. I, I thought it was alright. It was pretty good. I think it's weird because kind of since I accepted, like, you know, it's 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 not going to match up to the standards. I've been enjoying it more, which makes me sad that I have to lower my standards to enjoy something. Yay! What did you think, though? Let me know. Oh, wait, no one's watched this because I'm really late. Uh, thank you for watching, though, if you did. Um, if you want to see more reviews late, which there probably will be, subscribe. Uh, like it. Let's talk about it. I'll be interested to hear your opinions if you're an anime only or if you've read the manga like me. Or even if you've read the webcomic, that'd be interesting, too. But no spoilers, please, for webcomic people. For, uh, you know what I mean? No spoilers. Thank you.